In the previous sections, we secured a full page by its URL first and then parts of the page. In this section, we will look at how to secure methods in our controller or in our service layers. But first, let's discuss why secure anything at either the controller or the service layer. And the answer is simple. Security is an application-wide concern, and we want to be able to share the security rules and the business rules across the entire application and have these rules applied however our system is consumed. For example, we may choose to publish a RESTful service and give the user an additional route to consume our system. If security is only defined for the UI and the RESTful service doesn't have anything to do with the UI, then this will not be secured. And in conclusion, we would have to double our work and independently secure the alternative REST service as well. So let's start by looking at the user's admin page without any sort of method security enabled. As you can see, the users are displayed in the page correctly. Now let's secure this method responsible for retrieving the users at the controller level. We are using the simple add secured annotation and just specifying the authority that we are requiring for access to the find all method. Let's now restart the server and let's see how this affects the user's table. We are going to log in with user1 and we should not be able to see the users in the table. However, this is not the case. Even though we are logged in with user1 which does not have role admin, we are still fully able to see the users in the table. The problem here is the fact that we have not enabled security annotations in our system. So let's do that now. We need to define the global method security element in our security namespace and we need to explicitly specify the secured annotations as enabled. So let's restart the server and see that this time the users are no longer displayed in the table. And indeed we are getting the error to load the users and the users are no longer displayed. If we log in with admin, we should be able to see the users being displayed in the table and we are. The downside of Ad Secured is that it's very limited. What makes this annotation limited is the fact that it doesn't support expressions and this greatly limits the options and the flexibility to secure methods, especially compared to what we are able to achieve when we were securing URLs or page elements. So let's look at replacing this with a pre-authorized annotation. This annotation fully supports all the expressions that Spring Security has available. So now let's take advantage of the has role expression for role admin. Same as with the secured annotations, we need to enable these new annotations as well. We do this with the pre-post annotations attribute still on global method security. So let's restart the server and let's make sure the pre-authorized annotation works as expected. So let's log in with user1 and with user1 we should not be able to see the users in the table and indeed we are getting this error. Now let's log in with admin and let's make sure that we are indeed able to see the users as we should be. And indeed we are. Alright, let's finish by looking at a more advanced example of using these security annotations. We're going to be looking at the method for retrieving the user by its identifier. Now, what we want is admin users to be able to access everything, all users in the system, but we want standard users to only be able to access their own data, namely their own user resource. Essentially, what we need to avoid is a standard user accessing the details of another user. Okay, so let's analyze this security expression. As you can see, we are using the OR logical operator to combine two individual expressions into one that will better suit our needs. The first expression simply checks if the user is an admin. This is the has role standard expression that we have used before. It is the second expression that will be much more interesting. First notice how we are accessing the row principle and we are looking at its ID. Notice how the expression refers to a user ID. Also notice how the parameter of the method is user ID. So what's happening here is that the expression actually refers to the parameter of the method and uses it when the expression is evaluated. So just to recap, what the expression is checking is that the ID of the currently authenticated principle is the same as the ID of the user data that is being requested. 
making sure that the standard user can only get their own data. If the IDs match, the data will be returned. If the IDs do not match, access to the data will not be allowed. This is of course an advanced expression, one that is using logical operators, access to the raw principle, as well as accesses the parameters of the method directly. Throughout this section, we used in practice several types of Spring expressions to secure our application. We started by securing a full page by its URL. We then secured parts of the page using the taglib support that Spring Security provides. And finally, we secured Java methods at the controller level.